And the last speaker of this meeting uh, is Eitan Grossfeld from Be'er Sheva, Ben Gurion University of the Negev. <laughs> And laser is red? Or? Protected ground state in short chains of qubits in circuit quantum electrodynamics. Yeah, sounds right. <laughs> okay, so thanks for the invitation. Uh, welcome to the last talk of the conference. Uh, why did it move? Okay, this is causing problems. Um, okay, so uh, I'd like to tell you today about some work I've been doing with my colleagues from uh, the University of Surrey, um, Iran Genosar and this uh, talented student, uh, Adam Kalison, and, and, and the student from Ben Gurion, my student, was involved in that as well. Um, so um, what, what we are trying to do in this collaboration is uh, to combine two uh, promising fields uh, towards um, um, towards realization of uh, quantum computation, which is the field of superconducting qubits, which technologically is now very advanced, and the field of uh, topological states of matter, um, and the field of topological states of matter, which offers a great promise uh, towards protection of quantum information. Um, and uh, there are two ways to do that. Uh, first, uh, we want to think about how to embed hardware that is related to topological superconductors within the hardware of the, the super, superconducting circuits. That can create certain uh, hybrid devices uh, that can, con can be controlled via light uh, in a very, very uh, controlled manner. Um, um, and, uh, and in fact, what you get there is a sort of a, 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 protected, a protected state that can still be somehow controlled using the light. Now, another, another approach is to um, think about just superconducting circuits, which is the thing which is uh, uh, very close to current experiments, and see whether you can use them as some sort of simulators for topological matter and then perhaps use the, oh, what's going on? <laughs> and then perhaps use uh, their properties in order to, um, in order to uh, um, really uh, generate um, protected devices. So I guess that the motivation for this work is to think about a theory of devices which are compatible with the state-of-the-art fabrication abilities, which means just a small collection of qubits. Uh, they are coupled to uh, cavity photons. Um, um, they, they are embedded in a cavity. They interact among themselves. But that's about it. That's, that's what we can do currently. Uh, and we want to achieve um, increased protection of, uh, of uh, quantum, informa quantum information stored in the device. And the problem is that we, we, we want to use just a few qubits in order to achieve this goal. We can't use too many, there aren't too many, uh, so just a few qubits. Okay, so the next slide. Um, so when I say state-of-the-art hardware, um, okay, we'll have to do something about that. When I say state-of-the-art uh, hardware, uh, I'm thinking about a qubit, which is uh, the transmon, which is one of the most promising qubits. Uh, it's just a mesoscopic Josephson junction. Um, the, the main engineering uh, breakthrough was to realize a device in which the Josephson energy is much larger than the charging energy. Next slide. Um, so. Um, so to, to, in order to uh, do that, they, 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 are, they use some sort of a, of a, of a shunting capacitor. Really? You think so? Yeah. It looks uh, kind of random, but... Uh, 
I think it generates random clicks for some reason. Um, Okay, so uh, I'm not sure uh, whether uh, with these technolo technological problems we're going to generate a quantum computer, but... Um, it's, it's after the beer. Okay. It's after the beer. <laughs> okay, so, um, so basically we're going to use these uh, qubits from the last slide. Um, and, and Maybe electricity. Okay, yeah, good idea, I guess. Yeah. Okay, so sometimes the simplest solution is the best solution. Um, so, um, yeah, thanks. Is that okay? Ah, close it. Okay. Is that better? And now I reduce this a bit. Can see what I'm doing. The first one? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, thanks. Um, so, uh, so um, th these, these sort of qubits uh, basically uh, realize an unharmonic oscillator, um, but th th they, can, they can reach a point where the, the levels are pretty flat that, al that uh, uh, allows um, um, to reduce the noise, which is due to the uh, ch ch charge sens sensitivity to a nearby gate. But you maintain just enough anharmonicity in order to really think about the two-level system, which are going to be just the two-level system, uh, the two lowest levels of this uh, anharmonic oscillator. Um, so, um, so that was the qubit, and the cavity is just a superconducting cavity. It's all being grown on chip, um, um, and a... Um, and basically, you use light in order to do everything. You can control the qubit, initialize it, um, measure it. Everything is done uh, using light. Um, and, and this is, this is, a, and this is a, the Hamiltonian of a circuit, quantum electrodynamics, just a two-level system coupled to a cavity. Uh, and there's this uh, term here that covers the cavity and the qubit. And you can also drive it using uh, some coaxial cable uh, that, uh, that uh, um, brings in the microwave radiation. Uh, and yeah, and there's a sad uh, fact of life that uh, qubits uh, decohere, uh, a lot of existential anxiety around this. Um, what, what happens is that uh, basically due to, uh, there are some uh, mechanisms uh, contributing to it, but the transmon is going to decohere in about a few microseconds, maybe tens of microseconds uh, if you use the newest generation, but not more than that. So um, that's about the state of the art. And then, and then you go to the next, uh, to the next uh, idea, which is to use logical qubits. And one of the most uh, beautiful uh, ways to do that is uh, use the superconducting circuits to simulate spin chains. Um, and uh, uh, and uh, w one, of these, one of the possibilities is to simulate a surface code. Um, so the surface code, um, I won't go into that because that's not the main uh, topic, but it can realize a single, a single logical qubit using many, many physical qubits uh, that requires a lot of measurements, a lot of qubits, a small nuclear reactor to uh, power everything, but, uh, but it's, 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 uh, it, it can really achieve protection. We are very far from it in terms of, uh, of uh, experiments. Uh, we have uh, nine qubit circuits, that, that's a state of the art. I think it's for Martini's group. Uh, you can engineer local interactions between qubits. 
Uh, and then you have the ability to perform local measurements. That, that's, that's everything you can do. Now, if we want to go down in dimension, then there's a, an idea which uh, prevails in the literature, which is to simulate the Kitaev chain using uh, qubits. Um, and that's, that, that, that's a beautiful idea because uh, the Kitaev chain is, uh, we all know it's topological um, uh, uh, after the last uh, talks. Um, and, and basically what you get there is a, 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 you get a non-local fermion, zero energy fermion, that generates a ground state doublet for you. And this doublet could be used in principle to uh, perform a, a quantum computation in a protected way. Um, so, uh, so we could use that, we, we could try to simulate the Kitaev chain and uh, try to see whether that can benefit uh, quantum information processing. Um, but it, it's not going to work, uh, and that was a, 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 the, that was a problem. Um, so let's let's see why it's not going to work. It's not going to work because when you try to simulate spins, then you you're going through the Jordan Wigner transformation, which is also beautiful, but it is also non-local. Um, so going from fermions to bosons involves some non-locality, and that's uh, very well appreciated. Um, so what happens is that uh, if you think about local perturbations in the spin language, they will become non-local in the fermion language and vice versa, and that may cause uh, problems. Um, so the difference between the two systems is, uh, um, is therefore in the coupling to the environment. The coupling to the environment can be either local or non-local. Um, and we are going to think about very different environments for the two systems. Uh, for the Kitaev chain, we are going to think about a, a, a fermion reservoir. For the spin chain, we are going to think about some bosonic reservoir, uh, which will generate um, a spin flips. So in order to measure the rate of spin flips, let's, let's devise some measures. Uh, and, uh, and we devised uh, just uh, some natural measures which I'm not sure whether they are observables by themselves, but they are related to things which are observable. Um, and then the measure for the case of fermions is going to be just an incoherent sum over uh, the possibility of entering, of uh, putting in an electron and causing a transition, or removing an electron and causing a transition between ground states. Um, similarly, for the spin, for the spin systems, we are going to think about just spin flips, local spin flips. Uh, in one of uh, in x, y, or z, uh, which are going to take you from one ground state to the other ground state, uh, and sometimes we will also sum over all spin directions uh, again uh, incoherently. Um, so, um, so what happens? Um, so, if you try this, then basically for fermions, you are going to see these patterns. Uh, and for spins, these pa patterns, so this is a function of mu and delta uh, of, uh, of the xy chain. Um, um, and these uh, black uh, regions, just ignore them, it's just a numerical problem. Um, but, uh, but let's try to appreciate the difference for a second. So here, you basically uh, see that you get coupling, but only on the first site and actually also the last site. And the bulk, of course, is a, a, and the bulk is a completely black. There's no coupling. You cannot push in an electron within the bulk, and that's of course due to the n Majorana modes. If you do the same with the spins with the xy chain, then you get these patterns, which do not differentiate between edge and bulk, um, but they differentiate between up and down. And actually, this difference is due to a spin rotation. So when you couple with S x, you are going to see this pattern. And when you couple with this y, you're going to see the pattern, uh, the opposite pattern, uh, just mirror reflected around this axis. So, um, so what that teaches us is that the Kitaev chain is not, is not fully protected, uh, especially when you simulate it, there's a large region where the ground state is protected, but there's always a region, there's always a region in the spin direction 
in which you're going to get uh, transitions. Um, okay, so that's another said, uh, uh, said uh, message that uh, the Kitaev chain, uh, when translated to spins, uh, decoheres, and there are uh, some works about that. Um, now, uh, some people were actually interested in uh, whether Majorana fermions can be seen in this type of systems. Uh, and we tried to look at, at it, so that's a little bit of an aside from the main talk. But just, just uh, because uh, it can teach us something, uh, let me try to uh, explain this, uh, this part. So what, what, what happens is that um, uh, when you measure the spin flips at the, end of the, of the, at the end of the chain, you actually measure the Majorana zero mode. If you go to the next site, then this, the string operator basically um, um, brings some more information, so it, uh, it, it, uh, um, it um, creates some non-locality, and you measure a little bit more. Uh, however, you can still calculate the correlator and measure again uh, the zero energy state. Um, so there are some observ observables. The wave function of the zero energy state could be observed in the XY chain. Okay, so uh, I guess that at this point it's a little bit of a sad uh, message, but, but let's try another, another thing. So the, the circuit QED is not, So circuit QED is not limited to the ingredients that I mentioned till now. There's also the cavity. And the cavity brings in extra terms to the Hamiltonian. And actually, if you take a Schrieffer-Wolf transformation, then, a, um, then you can generate non-local uh, interactions between the qubits. And that generates uh, this, uh, flip, the, the flip-flop terms uh, which, are, which are completely non-local. They can couple spins at any distance uh, d uh, using this term uh, that uh, appears here. Um, so let's try to see what is the effect on, on the model. <clears throat> so first, we looked at the energy spectrum. And we kind of see that as a function of one of the parameters, mu, we get a transition between something that looks like a single ground state and something that looks like two ground states, which are almost degenerate. Um, so the combined model basically uh, has su some, uh, in some interesting region over here. Um, okay, we lost the talk. Um, okay. Um, I think it's an electrostatic effect. Let's try to cancel this uh, touch screen. Um, now, if we look at another direction, then what, what we see is, um, is that we get some sort of a doublet state over here. So, so the ground state is sitting here at zero energy. There's another state which is, uh, which is flat uh, which has small degeneracy, which is uh, actually smaller than all the energy scale in the system. And then you cross to the Kitaev chain here, which has a perfect uh, degeneracy um, um, around here. Um, and the last uh, uh, direction that I, I want to mention is what happens when you change the flip-flop interactions. So when you change the flip-flop interactions, you basically uh, also cross into this uh, interesting region which, is, uh, which appears at a critical uh, lambda flip-flop, and uh, also you get out of it at some other value of uh, the flip-flop interaction. Um, and there is some optimal value. It seems like the state is not fully formed, uh, but uh, in this case. Um, and then if we look back at the XY chain, so, um, so the, the, this, is, this is the, the diagram that, is, that uh, should, uh, um, should signify the rate of uh, transitions between the two ground states. So, uh, and now I sum over all spin directions, so I get both uh, the upper part and the lower part. 
Um, so you see that the, again, you see that the XY chain is not protected, but once you enter, once you add the flip-flop uh, interaction, you actually get a region, some interesting region over here, which seems to be uh, fully protected. Um, so, 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 the, the, so what, what this black region means is that you can, you can create no transitions between the ground states in any spin direction. Um, and, and this model, uh, this model uh, we try to look for it in the literature. There are many experts in the crowd, uh, so maybe one of them knows uh, we couldn't find it. Um, but, but I'll be happy to... Uh, but, but your, your two ground states, it's not basically having all, all the spins pointing in one way or the other way? When you have the two ground states, isn't it? Yeah, but, the, but, then, but then you'll get transitions. I mean, you, you could get transitions. Yeah, so because if you, if you take everything in the same direction and everything in the same direction, you could go into a superposition of the two, and then you'll get transitions using one exactly. of the other. So why having, so how does having the long range interaction help? Yeah. Because uh, the state should be more or less the same with the ground states. Yeah, I, 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 I don't think it's the same, but, uh, but in any case, it's, yeah, it's, th there is some small region in which it's yeah, it's fully protected. Um, uh, the, the, so, so, I mean, yeah. So we know for sure uh, what it is not. However, we are not, we are not, uh, we are not completely sure what it is. Uh, we try to look. We, we try to look at uh, uh, other measures uh, uh, to see what the state could be. So one thing we looked at we looked at his disorder. It seems to be pretty robust to disorder. Uh, we try disorder in a few parameters, and as long as you don't close the gap, it seems to persist. Um, uh, we also uh, looked at a measure which is uh, somewhat uh, contrived. Uh, so if, if you look at the Kitaev chain, then it makes sense to kind of take a mixed state over the two ground states and measure the entanglement entropy for this mixed state. The entanglement entropy is, is uh, well defined for, the, for, a, for this kind of a mixed state because uh, the two states are in different super selection sectors of the theory. However, in that case, we don't know for sure uh, whether, whether the two states are in different uh, super selection sectors. But you know, we went from the Kitaev chain into this model, so we kind of tried that. And when we did that, we actually saw that the entanglement entropy and uh, uh, gets a quantized value of log four within, uh, within this uh, state. So we, this is, in a sense, um, an order parameter for this, uh, for this uh, transition. Uh, we are looking at other order parameters, but it takes uh, some numerical time. Um, um, but in any case, um, that's uh, basically uh, the, the main, the main, uh, the main uh, message that uh, the Kitaev chain could carry information about the edge states even when you simulate it using spins. Uh, if you add non-local flip-flop interactions, you, you enter an interesting phase which, which is fully protected uh, to uh, spin rotations in all directions. Uh, it's, uh, it has a gap. It is different from the Kitaev phase for sure. That's all we know at this stage. Thank you for your attention. Yeah, this one is. It's, yeah. This one? It's this one. So you have the XY model, the usual an anisotropic, and you have uh, uh, the, the flip flop term, which is uh, just uh, um, uh, non local. Uh, um, Uh, so in terms of fermions, it's completely non-local. There is a string operator, and we have no idea what to do. Um, in terms of spins, uh, th there's probably a method uh, to, to so yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. More questions? Okay. So thank you very much. <laughs>